the person who's live streaming in this, who does clubhouse debates. Hey, come on up, strong atheist. Let, let's let's see if you can if you can rub two brain cells together and um, um, not do your usual shtick. Okay, so so God does not exist because. Oh, I thought this was an election room. I was going to tell you I'm on this. Well, it, it 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 is because you see oh. the people who are cheating in the in the election are are godless uh, atheists. Oh, see, I'm on your side on the political part of this. I believe it was fraud, and I'm a conservative Republican. Okay, well that you're you're an outlier then. Yes, but you see, but why would that even matter to you, given you're an atheist? Because after all, you're in a world where nothing is dictating uh, uh, why anything is can be or cannot be uh because right? i'm very patriotic american i love my country and um, did you hear my last statement you ask you're asking why it even matters yeah, why would why i'm explaining would to you why it matters just, no but you see did you hear what i just said because i'm an atheist why does it matter because nothing has a foundation type stuff i understand no 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 nothing dictates why anything happens nothing now do you either accept that or you reject that oh uh, so I think physics dictates what happens. Oh, okay. So are physics eternal? Yes. And how did you make that determination? I base it on um, first law of thermodynamics. Nope, nope. That's a fail. We've already been through this already. Okay, you've I'm... already been, you've already been corrected on this. Do we need to go through it again? I don't. That's up to you. I really thought this was a political. So, okay. Well, was... yeah, but you see, but you see, politics are rooted in metaphysics. Okay. Okay. Politics are a form of ethical imperatives about how people ought to c conduct themselves on a small and a grand scale. Okay. Okay. And that is going to be the product of your model of reality. Now, um, you say that physics is e is eternal. I don't know anybody in the world, not even Lawrence Krauss, who would assert that, let alone defend it. Okay? Now, do you have anyone in the physics world who advances that? Well, I'm basing oh. it, and like I was mentioning, on first law of thermodynamics. Okay, that... what is the first law of thermodynamics? Energy slash matter can't be created or destroyed. No, or no, no. no. Okay, okay, right. Okay, so... This is typically what we find here, okay? The first law of thermodynamics can be expressed in different ways. It's called the conservation of energy, okay? What it simply means is, is that the, when, when we say it can't be created or destroyed, it's talking about from our perspective in terms of natural occurrences or man-made activities that either in either way we don't, know how it could be created or destroyed. Why? Is because the first law of thermodynamics is expressing what is called the conservation of matter and energy, that the amount of matter and energy remain the same, although they change form, which is then followed by the second law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics is not a scientific stipulation as to the eternality of matter or energy. But the existence of matter and energy is not the same thing as physics. Okay. Okay. So they don't put that those caveats on the first law of thermodynamics. Like the thermodynamics does not support that. They don't, well, they the don't first say from, law of thermo, the first law of thermodynamics does not advocate or teach the eternality of laws. It does not even advocate the eternality of matter and energy. It just simply states that in our uniform experience, that the amount of matter and energy remains the same, although it changes form. And then it becomes more disorderly, which is the second law. So the first law of thermodynamics is not a stipulation that the world of laws is eternal, nor is it a stipulation of the eternality of matter and energy. So it doesn't say in our universal perspective. It says energy slash matter cannot be created or destroyed. Right, right. No time. Right. Okay, okay. Well, then here's the problem. Do you, you do realize that there is no one that you would be able to appeal to, okay, 
who is going to advocate for the eternality of matter and energy. Do you have anyone in mind who teaches that? Uh, no, however, when they say energy slash matter can't be created or destroyed, they are not putting a time on there. If it can't be created or destroyed, you're, you're, you're it, it therefore follows. The reason, okay, no, no, it doesn't follow. No? Okay, it doesn't follow. That's a non sequitur. Okay? It just simply means, okay, you do understand that all scientific declarations are provisional, right? Sure. Okay, and we're operating from induction. And induction is always problematic. Okay? So when we make these inductive inferences, we're making it based upon our uniform experience, right? Right. Okay. So the stipulation matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed is just simply shorthand that the matter and energy in our uniform experience simply remains constant, although it changes form. Once again, We've been through this on previous conversations, and I've nailed it down here. The first law of thermodynamics does not um, indicate either directly or indirectly the eternality of matter or energy. You if can't it, find anyone. Can you find any PhD in physics who will defend that? I didn't look it up, but I could try. I don't know. No, but, no, but you'll be just... good. You will be wasting your time. There, not even Lawrence Krauss teaches this. So it doesn't say can't be created or destroyed now. It says can't be created or destroyed. You're not. You're not. You're not listen, listen, listen. Again, you're having this self-imposed fog come over. Do you know that I? Do you know who Lawrence Krauss is? Yes. Okay. I spoke with Lawrence Krauss online. Okay. He wrote a, a book, a book called The Universe from Nothing. I'm familiar. Okay. Right. And he believes that the nothing is just simply an ocean of fluctuating quantum energy. Okay. This is what he thinks. Okay. Now, he, he believes that God is not necessary and that we can explain everything through laws of nature. Okay. When I spoke with him, I said, Dr. Krauss, can you tell me what it is that is fundamental? What it is that ultimate, that institutes every instance of what is, can be, and cannot be. Do you have any idea what his answer was? Yes, I recall he couldn't answer you. He, he said, I don't know, and then he became belligerent. Yep. So we're gonna go, th we're going through this one more time. Invoking the first law of thermodynamics cannot justify or establish either the eternality of matter and energy let alone the eternality of laws of physics. So I could see where you would want to believe that because if we have energy slash matter being eternal, it's one less the issue for you to the need issue a is God not why, in the first the place. Issue, the issue, again, you're doing what you always do. You're, put, you're, you're, you're doing a self-inflicted fog over you. You refuse to acknowledge the elephant in the, ro elephant in the room, Okay. You're not going to find, nor is there any person with, who has a PhD in physics who is going to explicitly argue for the eternality of matter and energy and the eternality of physics. Okay, even Stephen Hawking says the laws of physics that, that, we, that we know of, okay, on a broad scale, completely break down at the Big Bang. Okay, so if they break down at the Big Bang, now, by the way, I don't believe in the Big Bang. Okay, now Leonard Susskind, you ever hear of him? Heard the name. Okay, he's a he's a physicist in the class of Stephen Hawking. He's an atheist. He says, well, for all we know, physics could operate completely differently than what what you know what we think or or experience. So once again. The first law of thermodynamics is not presented as a stipulation of the eternality of matter, energy, or, or physics by anybody in the professional field. And I would be delighted if you could provide a source that says otherwise. Okay. So it, it, now, do it, you have a source for that? I said a few times that I did not. I would have to look it up. You told me not to Good. waste my then, time. Then you, are, then you are making it up. And in terms um, of reason, it, it's a non sequitur. It doesn't follow. 
So I'm basing it on on what the actual law says can't be created or destroyed. You're you're and- okay, okay. You're proving to me now you have a mentality of a teenager. You are misconstruing the wording. Okay. You are jumping from the wording to therefore it necessitates eternality. Okay. You're adding in wording that to try to yeah, make okay, it sound okay, like that's wow. not the case. Wow, you haven't changed one iota since the last time I interacted with you, okay? Stating that it cannot be created or destroyed. What that is referring to is that there is no man-made methodology or natural process that we are acquainted with that could destroy matter and energy other than its form would be changed, okay? So do you understand what what I just said? I understand that you added these okay, words. You, why no, wouldn't no, these words no, no, be? No. In, okay. Why would you, you these know, words be? You know be... what? Why are you so dishonest? One, listen again, and I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you're, you're reasoning like a 12 year old right here, and it's very irritating. Listen carefully. The first law of thermodynamics is not simply or only matter and energy cannot be destroyed. The conservation of matter and energy is that the amount of matter and energy remains the same but changes, simply changes form, okay? That's yeah. another way, is, is, is saying that the amount of matter and energy remains the same, although it changes form, is that a stipulation of the first law of thermodynamics? Yeah, I'm with you on that part. It's- okay, so, so when you say it can't be created or destroyed, this, this, this is just simply talking about that, that matter and energy simply remains constant in our uniform experience. Because you couldn't say, can you say that the amount of matter and energy remains constant prior to human existence? Yes. How do you know that? First law of thermodynamics, again, no, these no, words repeating, that you're adding you, you, into okay, there, okay, why okay, wouldn't your out, words... Out. Okay, Tom Locke, are you listening to this? Yeah, I'm hearing it. Yeah. Okay, do you, do, you, do, you, do you see the willful psychosis here? I've walked him through this step by step, okay? The statement matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed is simply a stipulation of our uniform experience. It does not logically, rationally, or scientifically logically necessitate the eternality of matter and energy. The first law of thermodynamics is not teaching that. Why wouldn't okay? Are we clear? Who- why wouldn't the people who made the first law of thermodynamics put in our perspective within that law if that was the case? Okay, be, because, because then if it wasn't based upon our uniform experience, then the universal dictum that you are extrapolating to okay, would have to be from supernatural sources. So you see... It's either either the either the first law. It, okay, listen. Is the first and second law of thermodynamics in virtue of induction? Um, sure. Okay. Is it is it is is that first law stipulated for reasons other than in the inductive process? Not sure on that one. I, I, well, I'm I, absolutely certain. Mm-hmm. Okay, from from a from a scientific perspective. So, because it's from it, it is it is an inference based upon induction. Induction is based upon our uniform experience. Okay. So once again, I've been through this to you on previous conversations. I've been through this before. You and in. in you know, this is going to sound insulting, but I'm not intending it. You are using a 13-year-old type of reasoning based upon the words. I've explained to you, you can go to a variety of websites that uh, are just scientific in nature, and they will explain to you, you will not find anywhere where the first law of thermodynamics is inferred, is inferred or extrapolated to the eternality of matter and energy. You won't find it anywhere. So I would so, think I would think so, that they would put I'm sorry, go ahead. You you're this is this is a contrivance 
of yours because of your poor understanding of the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics you will not find anywhere. And if you do find it or somebody else finds it, I will be glad to uh, vocalize a mea culpa that I was mistaken. You're not going to find anywhere where the first law of thermodynamics is extrapolated okay, to mean that it is eternal from scientific sources. You're not going to find it. Only people like you in your poor understanding of the first law, okay? So I would think that if what you say is the case, that they would put that stipulation in the first law of thermodynamics, which they the don't. First law of thermo. okay. You, again, you're, again, see, now I'm b- beginning clearly to understand. You're employing a teenage mentality. You are so desperate to believe this metaphysic that you are refusing to be educated on this issue. The state, the statement that it cannot be created or destroyed only refers to our uniform experience, which is the product of induction. Now, do you want to dispute my last statement I just made? I would like to ask you how energy slash matter. Okay. Okay. Did you, did you, did you, did you, okay. No, Tom, I agreed with you, see, you earlier. Did you, Tom, 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 like, did you see, you, did you see that? Does the I, gave him, I gave him, I gave him a direct question. Do you want to dispute that the first law of thermodynamics, okay, only is a, it's an inference based upon induction, which has to do only with our uniform experience. Um, I will, would dispute the last part having to do with our uniform experience. Okay. So, so it's so, so how would you deductively as opposed to inductively show the eternality of matter and energy? Um, it's past what I do. I'm just basing it on this. There's nobody. Listen, listen listen to me. I am not a scientist. Listen, listen to me. But you're shooting your mouth off as to the scientific nature and its extrapolations of the first law. I am correcting you on the correct understanding of the first law. You are misrepresenting it. What you are simply doing is is you're taking one wording of the um, first law of thermodynamics and you're running with it and you're imposing upon that wording what you want it to mean rather than how it is deployed within the scientific community. You're not going, okay. Can you find for me any scientist whatsoever at a master's level or PhD higher or any scientific site? Okay. That stipulates that the first law of thermodynamics, uh, uh, demands that it refer to the eternality of matter and energy. Um, so I had answered this before that I would have to try to look that up. And you said, don't waste my time. That was your response. Uh, you are that. wasting your time. But, you can look but, it up, but you're not going to find it. But what you're doing is adding words to the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Have you have you actually read any articles on the first law? Yes. I have. Okay. Yes. The first law of thermodynamics, is it not expressed called the conservation of matter and energy? Yes. What You ever heard of the word conservation? Yes. Okay. It means that the amount, when we conserve something, okay, like for example, if somebody develops senility and we have a conservative ship or that we conserve something, right? We're trying to preserve it. We're trying to maintain it. Okay. The, the first law, which is a stipulation. I mean, do I, do I really have to go right now to a variety of scientific internet sites to, to get you to submit? Okay. No, the problem I'm having is you adding the words from our perspective. Okay. Listen to me. When we say matter cannot be destroyed, matter and energy, okay, is that extrapolation in virtue of induction or deduction? Um, Induction, I had mentioned earlier. Okay. So induction refers to our uniform experience. Okay. It does not refer induction doesn't refer to anything outside of our uniform experience. Okay. Would it be limited okay. our experience and why? Right. Right. These, okay. So, so in work... our, 
in our experience as human beings, the first law, okay, if somebody were to produce an experiment tomorrow, okay, that destroyed matter and energy, they would have to change it, right? But the point is this, it, it's, it is not the law, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you that the first law is based upon our uniform experience, but it is not a stipulation of eternality. Because of the wording, you're, you're using an adolescent mentality to extrapolate that the wording indicates the eternality of it. That is not what the first law of thermodynamics, thermodynamics means. How okay? can energy slash matter possibly be created or destroyed? That's the issue. The issue. The issue is not how could it be. The issue is what is the meaning of those scientists who have formulated these laws? Okay, what do they mean by it? The issue. The issue. The issue is not. The issue is not whether it ultimately can or does not. What I'm trying to explain to you for the umpteenth time. Right? Are you listening? Listen. I think I've demonstrated that I have a fairly good educational understanding of this, okay? The first law of thermodynamics is not explicitly or implicitly a statement, regardless of how it is worded, of the eternality of matter and energy. Are we clear? I'm clear that that's your statement. I just okay, respectfully right, disagree okay, with it. Right, and I really right, thought you would okay. answer God. Yeah, he never... You know what? He's never changed his tune. He has the same fourteen-year-old mentality. Okay. I'm clear that that's your statement. Like. Yeah, yeah. No, no. the 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 point the point is this: is he's he's committed to the eternality of matter and energy being eternal, and the only way that he thinks that he can defend it is an appeal to the first law of thermodynamics. How many times did I go over to him? That the first law of thermodynamics is not a stipulation of the eternality of matter and energy. It's just a stipulation that in our uniform experience, which is the product of induction, that we don't know of any natural way or of human endeavor that matter and energy can be destroyed, although it will change form. And then hence comes in the second law of thermodynamics, uh, which is called entropy. Right? You see, what he's doing is he's making a metaphysical extrapolation based upon a misrepresentation of the English wording of the first law when it says it can't be created or destroyed. Okay? The, the, the better way of stipulating is that the amount of matter and energy in our uniform experience remains the same, although it changes form. Now, a junior high school student should be able to understand this. But you see, because people like himself are committed to deception, they will anything to, to run away from God. And by the way, he he, he admitted he, he can't appeal to any source. He doesn't know any source where they're where they're claiming that. Go ahead, H. Clubhouse debates. <laughs> 